Our current main concern is the study of vortex interactions. The three examples we will be referring to involve the three-dimensional interaction of two vortex tubes, their reconnection equal strength, vortex winding unequal strength, and a two-dimensional shock bubble problem. Visualization is important, but it is only the first step. From a visualization, you cannot measure area, volume, circulation, track or count the distinct observable regions. We have developed segmentation tools to separate and isolate connected regions. We do this by expanding local extrema in the field. In this way, we can isolate different regions of the same magnitude. We can also separate objects using other variables, such as the vector field. Once objects are isolated, a whole range of shape parameters can be computed. Two useful ones are skeletons and second moments, which define an ellipse in 2D or an ellipsoid in 3D. Object isolation is also important for feature tracking. In this example, the inner tube is tracked to understand its evolution. Feature isolation can also be used in juxtaposition, comparing objects from different data sets, possibly contrasting a simulation with an experiment. A Fourier pseudo-spectral method is used to solve the hyperviscosity regularized Euler equations. The horizontal vortex is slightly stronger than the vertical one. At an early stage of the simulation, filaments are formed. The vortices approach each other and form an anti-parallel configuration at t equals 5. A sudden topology change then takes place. This is called reconnection. At time t equals 4, at a threshold value of about 28% of maximum, we see two horizontal tubes and two faint vertical tubes. As we vary the threshold value, generic shapes begin to appear. This suggests that physical space moments about extrema can be used for abstraction. Computing the second moment defines an oriented ellipsoid over a region outlined by the isosurface. We now generate field lines emanating from the computed ellipsoids. Our main interest is to study the juxtaposition of vorticity and the stretching term omega dot grad u. This gives insight into the mechanisms of reconnection. Ellipsoids are used to simplify the structure and the interactions of these two quantities. The yellow ellipsoids and the black field lines are from the vorticity data set. The green ellipsoids and the red field lines are from the stretching term. We now superimpose both in the same space. In this scene, the vorticity is displayed with an isosurface threshold of about 65% of maximum, with the yellow ellipsoids inside at a threshold of 85%. At time t equals 3.25, we see the expected oppositely directed field lines through the yellow ellipsoids, representing the ingoing configuration. We also see six green ellipsoids and one large green one below. The red lines indicate a spiral attractor for the vorticity stretching. It is launched from the two central green ellipsoids. This is more evident in the next figure at t equals 4, where the yellow ellipsoids are pancake-like. At this time, the six small green ellipsoids have merged into two, and the dominant rear side ellipsoid has vanished. The coherent field pattern is a torus-like object. The upper and lower traversals are at the location of the soon-to-emerge outgoing bridges. Our continuum simulations showed that bridging vorticity is an essential feature of generic reconnection. We are also studying how the simpler bio savart model behaves. A simulation was made of an initially perturbed elliptical ring, and the symmetric strain tensor was calculated. Vortex collapse phenomena is a generic process in fluid dynamics, and it is also inverted in the evolution of the bio savart simulation. What we found is that the ever-present anti-parallel collapse and large intensification of off-vortex axis and strain rates is common to both models.